So, UFC 261 is in the books. Now, originally, I had planned to uh, air a different show, but after watching the fights Saturday night, I had to do a little a post-show. Sometimes I do a rundown, but now I get to do a post-show because it's one of the best cards that I've seen in a long time. I can, I can say it's been over a year since I've seen a UFC card of this caliber. And it delivered. I thought it would. I knew it had the three title fights, but I'm not judging just by the amount of title fights. I'm judging by the the recognition of the the competition, the recognition of the fighters that was on there, the styles that they fought in, and the action that they brought to the game. Not just controversy, but on the merits of their performances. And that gets me in. If you saw the fight, you know what I'm talking about. And I'm still kind of excited about the things that happened. Unfortunately, we had the Weidman incident, but I'll get into that more towards the end of the show. But give you a little post rundown. Um, I had my picks before the fight, you know, obviously going in. I was looking at the main event, Usman versus Masvidal. And I saw this fight uh, taking place as the same as the first one. With, um, you know, Usman just coming out and striking, wrestling, pitting him up against the fence and holding him there. And I remember watching the um, the Embedded series. And I remember hearing Usman in their camp talking about they were going to work on some new things to bring to the table. And the, the new things, um, whatever it was, it, it paid off for him. But from my assessment of it is Usman wanted, appeared like he wanted to strike with him. And he kind of lured him into this, um, um, kind of hypnotized him into he's he's just striking and he would attempt to take down. He would look like he was going to take him down, which he did land a takedown early, and that kind of solidified, um, you know, the dominance in the first round. But at the end of the first round, I noticed they kind of got into um, almost almost like a brawl, and. When I was looking at him, I thought Usman was gassed at the end of the first round. And, and, um, you know, the bell went off. And it seemed like that Masvidal was just getting started at the end of the first round. But coming into the second, um, we see Usman go back to the striking, uh, faking some of the takedowns. But um, like his coach said, he went back to the basics. And it's just um, finding a seam to land his punches. Now his punches were, were crisp. He wasn't throwing any kind of looping punches. He was throwing straight down the middle where he needed to be. Um, Masvidal, uh, hands were way out of position. But you saw the um, what appeared to be a hook, you know, when you looked at it the, from the left side. But he used uh, his left hand to knock Masvidal's hand down out of the way so he could land the right hand and, and put him to sleep. Now, it just, things just worked out right. Masvidal's stance was in the right position. His head was turned away, hit him square on the jaw, and, and put his lights out, which was excellent, especially on the the replay. I know you've got seen replays all over the internet, but, um, you know, just, just basic stuff, foot position, keeping yourself in the, in the right spot to deliver strikes. That's something I talk about in my classes all the time. It's just uh, the basics and how you use your footwork to set up effective strikes. You just you just need to know where to be, and it, and it worked out for him. It worked out well. Um, you know, it was, it was a great fight. But I get into um, uh, Zhang and and Rose. Um, another one that I was um, that's the one I was most interested in seeing because I thought this would be um, you know a, a battle of the stand up. And I thought Rose would have it on the ground. Um, I kind of expected uh, Zane to to get in there and, and fight, you know, up close, right in her face and keep the pressure on. Um, as you saw, Rose would stand on the outside. But I expected Rose to clinch up with her, put her up against the cage, uh, work her there and dominate her on the ground from the top position. But surprising enough, Rose... Um, Something something else is basic. Just she was striking from the outside, and it shows her um, proficiency coming from um, 
basic background of martial arts, from like your taekwondo and karate style. It's just a little lead round kick and it, with the shuffle. What that little shuffle does, it just uh, takes you from an outside range to an inside range to strike and move back out. And she, it was just so smooth and so simple. And what I really liked is the her kick broke through the guard of Zhang and hit her, you know, just just square on the face right there, enough to put her down and finish the fight. And it's not the most powerful kick that's in your arsenal, and it doesn't have to be. It just a lot of times people use it for a setup, but you know, things happen. You hit it in the right spot, and people go down. And it was a it was a beautiful kick, not much of a setup. But you can't. It's, it's tough to see that coming if you um, if you hadn't stood in front of somebody and been kicked like that. You you just won't understand what I'm talking about. So if you if you're not training, you need to go out there and train so you see this stuff from both sides. Because standing on the outside and looking in is very different than if you're in there and doing the do. <laughs> but um, another fight as the Valentina. Uh, versus Jessica Andrade, Valentina. I I had her pick to win all day. She is very methodical, very technical, and very disciplined to do the things that she does. You can see her when she, like for instance, when she got the the body lock on her or the bear hug, as some people would say. She waited for her opportunity. She didn't try to force anything. She waited for Jessica to move and she put her down. And she really was working on breaking her in the first round. And she done it from the feet. She done it from the ground. And it was, it, like I said, it was just smooth and methodical. Nothing was forced. She responded in every area that um, where Jessica tried to, tried to fight her in. And, and she dominated the performance. She got her in the crucifix and and finished her off, and it was just it was it was sweet. It was picture perfect. If it's any um, fight style that you're gonna take on, is and you talk about well-rounded fighters, uh, she's one of them because it's on the ground and on the feet and in the clinch, um, just in all places. So dominant performance from her. But we get into uh, you know Hall versus Weidman. Uh, going into this fight, I, uh, you know, I knew I said Weidman had to get out there and get after it in the first round and put it on him and avoid Hall's power shots and just not stand in front of him and get hit, um, allowing Hall, you know, more opportunity to win the fight. Of course, they fought once before, um, but Weidman did just that. You know, he came out and he got on him right away, but. Unfortunately, um, his positioning and the placement of his kick uh, wasn't so didn't work out for him. You know, he received an unfortunate injury of the breaking of the leg, as him and Silva done back in 2013. It was uh, December 28, 2013, the second fight between Chris Weidman and Anderson Silva, and Anderson Silva. Um, he threw it with the the left leg. I think the opposite leg is Weidman, but uh, he still experienced a break. And s- something that's similar in these guys when they they're doing the leg kicks is uh, I got a picture of them. You know, they're side by side. If you take a look at their body positioning, um, you know, none neither one of them are turning over the hip. Uh, when you don't turn over the hip, it takes your leg out of place to where it can sustain more damage. I'm not saying if you turn over the hip, you're guaranteed not to break your leg, but your leg is stronger if you do turn over the hip. And it's something that some MMA guys do to prevent takedowns and the, to rechamber their kicks a little bit quicker. But there's there's more cons that go along with that type of type of kick. But it's just you know styles of fighters. You know some are um, some kick more than others. Some are more, um, let me say, foundational martial arts. You know, like your karates or your taekwondos, kempos, things like that. They were, you know, have a variance of kicking styles 
rather than just uh, coming from a fight style where you just kind of jump into Muay Thai, Muay Thai or something like that, where the kicking style is just different. Um, like I said, you train different types of styles, go out and experience the t- uh, styles because a kick's just not a kick. There's different, there's a number of ways to throw kicks and it's not always the power in the kicks. It's the placement. Uh, you'll experience that in, uh, if you do firearms anywhere else, it's more about placement than it is power a lot of the times. But um, going into this fight, Weidman didn't have the, he didn't have the best record. Um, I was going back and I was looking at it in the, his last wins that he had. Um, he was like, out of the last eight fights, he only won three fights. Now, if you take um, the nine fights after Hall, um, shoot, that's still like three out of nine. His last win came from Omari Ekmadoff. Before that, Kelvin Gastelum. And before that, Vitor Belfour. Um, keep going back and you have the Machida fight and then Silva. But if you go back and uh, till he started winning again, he won three out of the last eight fights. So he didn't have the best record coming in. And he's probably one of the guys that were still fighting in the UFC, even though his record's still kind of upside down for the last eight or nine fights. And and I'm, if, if I'm not mistaken, Willie has been cut. Um, his record was better than that, but his performances um, were lacking in some of the fights that you've seen from him. But um, different things happen to different people. Their, their pathways aren't always the same. And the best we can do is wish um, a good recovery for Weidman. Anything like that is, is tough to come out of. As we know, Silva went through it. I don't ever think he was um, at least mentally the same fighter after he came back. Because having, having your leg broke, split like that, is mentally challenging it's it's challenging enough to have any type of break and come back from it and then you know be able to strike with the confidence um without just that break being in the back of your mind um but you know when you experience adversity in life it's how you get up and you keep on moving we try not to let things like that keep us down always push forward always put in some work and with the support of the people around you come back and and do it again. And I hope that's, hope that's what he does. But if he chooses to go another route, I can, I can see that. I just hope he's in a a good spot, but, uh, just want to come in here, talk about this, um, get this two sixty one excitement out here to the world. If you have any thoughts of the fights or anything, which I know you do, I've heard some of them, uh, leave them in the comments below. Um, share, like, subscribe, interact, all those things. And if you're listening to me on iTunes, go in there and leave a review for my podcast. Every Monday, you'll catch a new episode of Mini Talks. And I'll catch you guys in the next episode. <laughs>